Once you've recorded some high quality video content, one of the critical steps is color grading and exposure correction. We're going to jump into Final Cut Pro to begin color grading our footage, but the concepts about color, temperature, and exposure carry to any video editing application. If you use Adobe Premiere, you can use the chapters in this video and we'll show you the tools in that application later. So I pulled in this footage from a Sony a7 IV camera. This is the standard picture profile and usually comes out pretty good. If you had good exposure and good lighting while you filmed, it shouldn't actually need too much adjustment, but sometimes I like to increase the contrast and maybe change the color temperature of the footage. So here in Final Cut, I'm gonna select the piece of footage that I want to color grade, and then I'm gonna select this symbol here in the interface that brings up the color palette. Now there are different ways to view the color grading tools, whether you wanna use wheels or the color board. So I'm gonna start with the exposure tab. This is going to help us decrease some highlights if there's parts of the picture that might be a little overblown or too bright or bring up the shadows or add or remove some contrast. You can see in this shot, especially around my forehead, it's a little too bright, maybe a little too shiny. So I'm actually gonna bring down some of the highlights. The highlights is the white circle here in the interface. You'll see the entire image is adjusted. It all got a little darker, but you can see the forehead is less shiny, less pronounced. Now to help increase the contrast, I'm actually gonna bring down the shadows or the black circle here in the interface. By doing that, it will increase the contrast even more now I'm getting a nice contrasty image that I actually prefer. But the image itself is a little dark. So we can fix this by either increasing the mid-tones or increasing the overall exposure using the master slider on the left. Now that it's a little brighter, I might go back and actually decrease some of the shadows and decrease some of the highlights again. And that's getting really close to an image I'd like to use. You can view the difference by unchecking this color board box and see what the original looked like versus what the color graded image looks like. And actually I would prefer it a little brighter, but with even more contrast. So let me see what that looks like. Now you can see it's a very subtle difference going from the color graded version to the original, but the forehead is a little less shiny. And so that was my goal. Now I can move on to the saturation tab. Now, if you filmed with a standard picture profile, the saturation is probably pretty good already in your footage. But if you wanna boost some of that saturation, and this is the colors that you are saturating, you can choose to saturate your highlights, midtones, or the shadows specifically, or use the master slider on the left to increase the saturation overall. I'm just gonna increase the saturation overall and see what that looks like. I actually like that a little bit more saturated, gives me a little skin tones. It's getting a little reddish, which we can fix once we get to the color tab. Again, you can use this checkbox next to color board one and see what the original footage looked like versus the color graded footage. You can see we get a little more contrast with the color graded footage and a little more color. I'm gonna leave it checked and I'm gonna go over to the color tab. And just like the other tabs, there's a global color temperature setting, which is the large circle, and then there's smaller circles for the highlights, midtones, and shadows. Because it was starting to get a little reddish, I'm actually gonna bring the global circle over to the blue section and go up just a little bit. You can see it takes a little bit of that pink out and makes it a little more blue. Now, if you want, you can also take one of these circles, like the highlights, and drag it way up or way down to see how it affects your image, and then let it go once it's at a place that you find pleasing. So if I take the highlight circle here and I really go far up on the blues, you see how it changes the entire image. That's making all the highlights very blue. Now I can drag it back down and maybe stop it where I would like it, or maybe I wanna drag it way down and see what it looks like to totally eliminate the blues from the highlights in the picture. And now I'm gonna drag it up to, I think where I'd like it, I actually maybe decrease some of the blues there. Or maybe you wanna see what it looks like if you take it to the red color and crank the red or totally remove it. Again, very different looks here. I'm gonna to stick to this blue area and maybe pull it down just a little bit. That's actually a color grade that I'm pretty pleased with. Again, I can uncheck this box and see what the original looks like versus the color graded version. You see you have more contrast, there's a little more saturation of color, and it got less blue, which is what I was looking for. And now I can scrub through the footage with that color correction applied, see how it looks. And the darks are actually really dark. Maybe it's a little too contrasty. So I'll go back to the exposure tab and bring up the shadows just a little bit so you can see a little more definition in my beard. Depending on the clothes that someone wore on camera, you might want to adjust those highlights and shadows, again, to really make them pop, even the saturation if they're in a very colorful outfit. Again, I'm gonna use the checkbox to see what the original looked like versus the color graded. And again, it's a pretty slight difference, but you can see those highlights are a little toned down from my face. And I'm actually gonna bring that contrast down a little bit more without color grading. And here's with the color grading applied. Again, depending on how well the actual filming went, these are just minor adjustments to color grading. Again, depending on white balance or if you were filming a mixture of outside and inside, you might wanna match how that footage looks by using these color grading tools. 
Now let's look at some S-Log3 footage, which is a very flat picture profile. Now, as you can see, this is not pleasing. It's very flat, very gray, but it actually gives you more flexibility as you color grade this footage. Now we're gonna have to make some larger adjustments to get this picture where we want it. I'm gonna take the exposure up and bring those shadows and highlights down. I'm gonna go to the saturation tab and you're really gonna need to crank the saturation on this kind of footage to get it to a nice color. As you can see, it's getting closer to what we're looking for, but as you can tell, it's not easy to work with the S-Log or V-Log footage when you're not accustomed to it. This is where LUTs come in. LUT is known as a lookup table. You can get free LUTs from camera manufacturers like Canon, Sony, or Panasonic. You can even get LUTs from creators like Tyler Stallman or Potato Jet, and then you can use those LUTs in Final Cut or Adobe Premiere to take some of this S-Log and V-Log footage and bring it closer to the kind of footage you're used to working with. To enable a LUT, I'm gonna select the clip here in the timeline, and then I'm gonna to go to the I tab here in Final Cut. Now it doesn't show up by default here, so I need to go down to where it says Basic and go to General. Now you actually have some more options here in the Info tab, one of them being Camera LUT. Now if I choose LUT, there's actually some built-in LUTs that Final Cut Pro gives you. One is the S-Log3 Gamut 3. That's actually the format that I filmed this piece of footage in. And if I select that LUT, you can see it gets me a lot closer to quote unquote a regular piece of footage that I can then color grade. Now I can go to my color grading tab even with that LUT applied and do some exposure, saturation, and color adjustments. Maybe I still want to increase the contrast a little more, increase exposure, bring down the highlights. I can increase the saturation here. And again, it's a very different look using a lookup table with a S-Log piece of footage versus using the standard picture profile, which I have here. So again, using a flat footage profile with a LUT can give you a very different look than the standard picture profile like I'm using right now. Again, you can add custom camera LUTs here in Final Cut. Once you've downloaded a LUT from a website, navigate to that LUT that you've saved on your computer. You can choose one here, and then you can apply those custom LUTs like this one's from Caleb Pike from the DSLR Video Shooter YouTube channel, and then color grade on top of that LUT again, to give you more flexibility. Now let's go over to Adobe Premiere and I'll show you the color grading tools in that application. Once you've imported a piece of footage here and dragged it into the timeline below, you can click on a clip right here and then you need to open the color palette. If you don't see it, click this button here in the top right corner and choose Essentials. This will bring up the Lumetri color tool and this has a lot of similar tools that you would have seen in Final Cut. Highlights, shadows, temperature, and overall color. Again, you can adjust the temperature. Maybe you want to skew it a little more blue. For lighting, you can again raise the exposure, maybe increase contrast and shadows and highlights you can pull down. And again, drag the sliders to the extremes and you can see how it's going to affect your picture. You'll also find some other tools here like Creative and Curves. Curves will allow you to use some of those color adjustments like we showed in the Final Cut application. Let's say you wanna adjust the reds in this image. You can click that and then drag the curve to see how it affects your image. Again, going higher up for, again, you can go higher up in the upper right corner to affect the highlights of the image and down in the bottom left to affect the shadows of the image or stay in the middle for an overall look. And then if you'd like to see the difference between your pre-color graded footage and after you've made the adjustments, click this FX button here next to the Lumetri color and you'll see the before and after versions of your image. Like Final Cut, Adobe Premiere also allows you to use LUTs or lookup tables with your footage. To do that, select the clip. Again, this is that flat picture profile that I filmed on the Sony with S-Log3. And here under that same panel of Lumetri color, you see input LUT here at the top. I can select this and choose a built-in LUT and see how these look on the footage. That's actually pretty good. And you can adjust that later, like increasing the exposure and then increasing the contrast. Or of course you can browse for a custom LUT that you downloaded from your favorite creator or other website and use that LUT here in Adobe Premiere. So those are some tips on color grading in Final Cut and Adobe Premiere. If you have any questions about what we covered in this video, leave a comment below. We'd love to answer you there and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. We have tons of content like using video switchers, automating your podcast workflow, and a ton more. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next video.